Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise, here in Sancho's pond, where we have been watching the otter swimming around in the pond on this gorgeous Sunday morning in the end times. That would be Sunday, January 21st. 2018 so uh, now that it's finally getting warm and sunny in Florida what am I getting ready to do I'm getting ready to head north anyway so this is a few hours early uh, I normally do this on Sunday night but since I don't know what my internet situation is gonna be tonight I am going to uh, before I dive into my weekly doomsday sermon coming up in a minute we're going to check in with our old buddy andy gartner from over there in zombie island otherwise known as uh england to see what is on the minds of the alert tribes member andy gartner here in the opening days of 2018 and there's been a lot of talk in the comment section about the great country of Norway, that save the planet country of Norway. And uh, this is an Englishman's view of the situation in Norway. <clears throat> but no nation is off the hook. Norway is not exactly some paragon of virtue turning its back on the industrial growth machine. It has fully exploited its sector of the North Sea oil bonanza, no doubt enriching its GDP and living standards mightily by selling as much of the stuff as it can to the highest bidder. The only reason Norway is not seen as a bad boy of planet eating like Zombie Island is, let alone the USA, is that it has relatively little lowland agricultural land, <coughs> so its population is tiny. It's that all-important IPAT equation again. <coughs> I expect consumption per capita of cars, easy jet flights, and plastic shit from China is as great as the UK, Germany, or any other rich nation, and I expect they are breeding rapidly so as to catch up with overall consumption. Thank you for weighing in on Norway. <clears throat> Let's see, this is some comments on his own, uh, on his own rant from from last week responding to all the comments on his comments um, <clears throat> let's see let's talk about the human brain the human brain had to have evolved first to create language effective tools fire dogs agriculture religion complex hierarchical societies, trading, civilization, science and technology, fossil fuels, industrial revolution, etc., etc. It's hard to say which particular stage led inexorably to the end times. I watched a... <laughs> a program the other week about the oldest stone structures ever found. The experts were saying they think the brewing of beer for these large gatherings of partying people from all over Europe might have been the reason for the original cultivation of grasses and thus humans switching from nomadic hunter-gatherers to, settle, to settled and civilized. Before civilization, humans were fairly benign and sustainable, only killing selected megafauna off. After that, the effects got much worse for whole continents affected, but it was still sustainable as everything was done by human and animal slaves. 
it was only after we found that fossil fuels could turbocharge civilization that we became actually cancerous. And good Lord, uh, there's a lot on Andy's uh, Andy's mind this week that I need that I need to get to. He has one more last comment uh, about all of the uproar about his comment saying that he wished Sancho Panza uh, would get eaten by an alligator. Uh, if you don't want some idiot to say, I hope Sancho Panza gets eaten by an alligator, don't put him in an alligator skull. <laughs> Sancho did not like that. So I'm, do not put him in an alligator skull. It's just too tempting. I'm the sort that feels compelled to say a horrible thing if everyone is being soppy over a little dog or a baby. Yeah, sorry about putting you in that alligator skull. Okay. What's next? Uh, let's see him weighing in about, uh, good Lord, he and Nancy Hope got in, got into a big, uh, discussion here. Uh, I don't know if, uh, I would like to get in to this, but, uh, <clears throat> Let's just cut to the bottom line. Um, but at the this is after a long rant. But at the end of the day, we are all just another mouth to feed on welfare and benefits. Uh, he does not produce any. This is talking about um, some scientist. He does not produce anything by his labor, and nor do you or I. We are all not even as worthy as a cabbage. All we do is consume, then spew out more excuses for our constant failure to respond to circumstances. Approximately 99.9% .9 of the people like to think that we are guilt-free, just innocent animals adrift in the ocean of fate, which is true. But in spite of that, most people also cling to the idea that humans are really special in the animal kingdom, not just zombies or worms in suits following a mindless and pointless and not a nice live and grow mandate. Humans always want it both ways. So Nancy finally gets the last word in. It seems that we can't discuss anything here except to say we are fucked and people are terrible. That's Nancy summing up Andy's view of the world. <clears throat> so one more call out to car drivers. As I shout at women, men, or couples with children, as I cycle past on my bike, childless, non-CO2 emitting and guilt-free, that's what the world needs, more fucking car drivers. What part of there are already seven and a half billion people or car pollution causes global fucking warming or we are going to run out of oil soon and going to die is too hard to grasp. This isn't exactly quantum mechanics, is it? I'm not pandering to the, these clueless fucking twats with silence anymore. 99.99% of people live in a reality-free vacuum to the ecological aware the stupidity of ordinary people is painful in the extreme. Okay, so uh, this is 
a Brit weighing in on Donald, summing up Donald Trump and millennials as while he's on it. <clears throat> Donald Trump is a globalist capitalist and longtime friend of other globalists like the Clintons. He spun the effective web of lies that he was a racist and nationalist pig just to get popular support within the white supremacist working class right wing underclass. Conventional neolibs like the Clintons and Merkel play the opposing I'm a lovely socialist lefty card instead. The choice is simple. If you want to make big money and climb the tree in mega cancer politics, either pretend to be fairly right wing or left wing. And this is uh, his comment about the economic summit in Davos, Switzerland, with Do where Donald Trump uh, has he already been back from there? <laughs> like a UN IPCC cop out or a Stone Age booze up gathering in the desert, Davos is just another massive get together and piss up social event for the current in group of big dick movers and shakers to have fun and do important deals and enrich themselves and their allies. The only difference between Davos and a climate change COP meeting is that the nominal subject matter for the gathering is at least honest. It's a meeting for New World Order plutocrats, for plutocrats to fuck around and do shady deals. No need for behind the scenes shenanigans here. Donald Trump is right at home at Davos. Alex Jones and all the other little pretend conspiracist corporate New World Order facilitators can get their ass to Davos as well. <clears throat> and then turning to millennials uh, investing in the stock market. The sort of millennial that can afford to, uh, to invest in stocks is not going to worry about a little thing like the future. And the sort of millennial that cannot afford to invest is not going to worry about the future either. We've got as much chance of meeting a global warming activist millennial as a Gen X one because at least the Gen X grew up in an era where the environmental crisis and intellectual subjects in general were not treated as opinions, sound bites, and taboos. I see no awakening in young people. They are as clueless, ambitious, and hardworking as their parents could dream of, as I've said before. Half the cars going up my road are driving instructor cars with a happy fresh-faced millennial inside. They are all going all out, making the sacrifice, making the sacrifices for the future's sake. And the final line on millennials and stocks. The only stocks millennials will see after the shit has hit the fan and we are propelled into the next fucking dark ages are the medieval wooden ones. You know, the ones with the heads of minor criminal heads stuck in them for other peons to throw cabbages at. As I tell millennials, invest in stocks now. Uh, then he's back, uh, back going off on Norway again. I think we have uh, been through that uh, already. Uh, but he does have some good news to share with the tribe.
from Zombie Island, the second biggest construction firm in the UK called Godzilla or Contralia or something has gone bust. They are a massive or were a massive employer of clueless moron car drivers, useless breeders, and frequent flyers building roads, housing projects, airports, hospitals, factories, and other vital growth promoting infrastructure and had contracts to build the whatever HS2 White Elephant Railway. I jump for joy because it's a massive indication of economic contraction in the sixth biggest economy in the world due to declining net energy from fossil fuels, obviously. <clears throat> the above description was pretty much taken verbatim from the BBC news report yesterday. Not and then out of nowhere he had to weigh in uh, on this subject now I am thinking about Donald Trump's 80 year old diseased ridden prick falling off in his wife's hand shit this really is rock bottom I've probably got a few years left to live maximum and now I have been infected by that fucking mind worm. Yuck. Yes, I would say uh, Donald Trump's disease-ridden prick is a mind worm. Uh, let's see what he... He has this uh, fun little story about a, a drone and uh, some good stuff to share about crows but unfortunately uh, I got a lot to cover on the mind of uh, Andy uh, here's a weird little snippet from the brain of uh, from the view from Zombie Island <clears throat> I was sitting on a bench overlooking a putrid lake a man and his little dog we're, we're walking along the edge of the Putrid Lake, and a group of four teenagers were sitting by the lake, enjoying themselves, playing loud music from a radio. Then the man and dog got stuck in a pool of quicksand beside a dying tree and got sucked down. Then one of the teenagers nonchalantly threw a soft drink can over his shoulder, and his girlfriend just laughed. Then, also unnoticed by the teenagers, a massive flock of Canada geese flew down to the lake, honking noisily while church bells tolled in the distance, and the moon came up. Then I realized it was all just a bad dream. The end. Alright, this is Andy weighing in on all of the 70-something people partying away their life in Naples, Florida in the end time. <clears throat> Good to see the elderly boomers in Florida still partying like it's 1969. There's still life in the old fuckers yet, even as they speed towards the tomb. I can't decide if watching boomers getting off with each other is better or worse than going to a club and seeing millennials getting off with each other and making the new batch. I must get another hobby before I am locked up. <clears throat> okay, then, uh, <clears throat> what? Oh, this is him. Now, I'm going to be, uh, talking about this story on Wednesday more about this uh, unadulterated horseshit study that appeared in Nature magazine a few days ago talking uh, about how this new research is showing that the worst case scenario of global warming predictions by the alarmist is bullshit. 
there will be no worst case scenario. We'll talk more about that on Wednesday, but Andy already uh, is weighing in on it. <clears throat> the worst case scenario is inevitable. How high global temperatures go go is now in the lap of the gods as humans have shown their hand, i.e. they will do absolutely bugger all. There is no reason for optimism as every new prediction is worse than the last. There will be no slashing of CO2, only an exponentially increasing outgassing of carbon dioxide and methane from all sources as the mega cancer goes all out to mine every source of energy it can to survive, convert all forests to productive croplands, and as positive feedbacks kick in and sinks are destroyed, Improvements in efficiency will increase, but this will only lead to increases in carbon dioxide. Jevons paradox, standard stuff. And carbon capture is most likely technically impossible and certainly at any effective scale and also flies in the face of all known capitalist principles. <clears throat> so what is going on in the Arctic? Help! The Arctic has woken up and is spewing all of its coldness down to the temperate zones where all the clueless fucking car drivers and central heating owners live, thus fooling them into a frenzy of primitive groupthink, de denialism, and fossil fuel burning. Someone once said the Arctic was going to become a big political player one day. I thought, yeah, right. What you talking about? How can a geographical land area become a player <clears throat> like a sentient and intelligent human leader or a nation state? That's insane. You'll be saying the whole world is sort of alive and has agency and can respond with dangerous homeostatic mechanisms to protect itself next. Well, my only questions now are what are its reasoning, long-term objectives, and can we possibly broker a peace deal with another brainless fucking monster before it unleashes the dogs of climate hell. <clears throat> there you go. This is his response to my video on Lakeland, Florida. That, meaning Lakeland, Florida, looks exactly the same as all the other shithole arteries of the mega cancer you have shown us. Is it a city or is it a road? Who can tell? How do people know where they are when it all looks the same? I bet they get completely lost cycling around for days and trying to build a mental map, a useful landmark or notable building, or most probably just a way out. But there is no way out. Modern design everything designed around cars to splurge the oil as fast as possible. It's not just the USA though. Ever been to Red Ditch in England? It is notorious for its mental ring road design. I nearly died of starvation on that ring road trying to find my way out of that fucking insane maze. A hydrogen bomb dropped on these unregulated, retarded, inhuman, space-age, modernistic sprawls would be an improvement to their overall design and planning. I'm glad I live in Zombie Island sometimes, even though it is just as shit in its own more compact way. This lifeless road, city, living arrangement is far worse 
than living in a Lagos shanty town, in my opinion. <laughs> this is his opinion on Amazon.com. Don't get me started on Amazon. Amazon did not let me use PayPal for what would be, admittedly, incredibly infrequent purchases, if any. So, as far as I'm concerned, Amazon can fuck themselves. More importantly, they can also fuck themselves for exploiting the name of a beautiful river and rainforest for their shitty capitalist enterprise. I inconsistently use another shitty capitalist enterprise, eBay, for all of my planet-eating purchases. Even so, up yours, Amazon. Okay, what does Andy have to say uh, about, about my whine about being cold? Now, a little whine about my propane running out. As I say to all clueless morons complaining about the cold, put some extra fucking layers on and buy a thicker D-U-V-E-T, which I think is like a down comforter or something like that. We have all these amazingly warm fabrics these days and clothes are cheap as fuck, made as they were by happy, hard-working slaves for us in sweatshop China, both of the human and fossil fuel variety. So nobody needs to bitch about the cold anymore. I've seen temps down to 3C in my bedroom. That's when it was minus 10 outdoors. Maybe I have an adaptive advantage. It's almost always a cold, miserable shithole here in Zombie Island, and you just get used to the cold after a bit. The way I look at it is this. If men could trek to the South Pole in the 1920s wearing only a thin sweater, shorts, a bowler hat, and a pair of plimsolls, I can certainly put up with a bit of cold. Same with heat and air conditioning. Not that we have that problem. Just open a fucking window or sweat it out. Die if necessary. Stop using prosthetics and crutches, you fucking wimps. Anyway, rat aside, I do get your actual point that you are not supposed to be freezing your ass off in Florida, and it is a major sign of global warming, however paradoxical that might seem to the lowbrow vast majority. Florida is in a subtropical climate zone, isn't it? I'd say paradise, but it is too fucked up for that. Even so, it's a place that the wealthy fat fuckers of empire go to retire, pots around in cars, and play golf. A bit like the American version of what Portugal is to the Brits, and have had successful careers in businesses in the mega cancer. Uh, anyway, enough of this shit. I'm off to the park with my sled. It's snowing. Woohoo! It's Saturday afternoon. The shops are busy. The roads are full of cars. GDP is healthy. The central heating is blazing in homes across the land, raising temperatures to the acceptable minimum of 25C for elderly people and children, and it's snowing. How normal can it get? But that would be forgetting that almost 100% of failed, clueless motherfuckers dial up the hopium to 11 in their attempts to return to reality, and most successful motherfuckers are complete fucking failures in anything but being a conformist zombie motherfucker in the failing motherfucker mega cancer. 
some people actually spurn success knowing any conventional form of it under these circumstances could never be anything other than wretched failure. They are good people, probably the only ones. Personally, I decided not to be an architect and became an unarchitect instead, something I am eminently qualified for because having anything to do with the abomination that is the building industry, knowing what I knew was immoral, not liking the prospect of suicide, my only choice now is minimum compliance rejecting to the best of my ability the most vacuous, nasty, and unsustainable set of living arrangements yet devised by humans is also called dignity. I am also the exception that proves the rule that humans are scum. And we will sum it up with his comments to my rant, to my clueless moron roundup rant uh, yesterday from the mainstream media to close out this rant. <clears throat> my immediate thoughts was hopefully the U.S. in general will be shut down soon and also what government? When <clears throat> You are a true cynic and have been around on this planet a while. You realize that there is only one news story every day. Insane mega cancer made of billions of insane or zombie-like predatory bio units devastate once beautiful living planet. Prognosis terminal. No sign of remission. Drastic chemo. Now only hope. Everything else is just a minor substory or sub substory as the humans always behave the same. Okay, there is some unpredictability due to the insanity of the individual units, but due to their extremely narrow range of predetermined responses, the outcomes are predictable. So you likely already know the news, and that that itself has been carefully filtered and edited in predictable ways before you hear it. There are few surprises in the news to the Enlightened Cynic. There you go. The Enlightened Cynic. Thank you very much for another week of pointed commentary from our favorite Enlightened Cynic over there on Zombie Island. And uh, with that tirade uh, from the other side of the pond out of the way, I am going to come back at you with this week's Doomsday Sermon from uh, Brother Peter Ward from his book, Under a Green Sky, coming right back at you in one minute. Bye, you enlightened cynics, you.